And you need the R&D money? This is a project I'm willing to risk on. So we're talking about a credit line here of 120 million, right? Fine. You get me the final papers and we're in business. <laughs> Happy holidays, Marty. Bye. Heard from Detective Cutter again? No, don't expect to. Oh, come on, Aunt Alex. I was here the other day, remember? When he came into the house? No, well, that was days ago, dear. And I'm sure there's a limit to the taxpayer's money he feels he can waste. So I appreciate your concern, but I got a lot to do here. Uh, I, I think my business with you is next on the list. Fine. What business is that? I promised to give Jilly Grant our half of WSPR if she helped win the company back, which she did. And I think you remember my response, which was, no way in hell. Look, I have no objection to Jilly Grant, personally. I'm happy to see her run the station. Well, of course you're happy. You got your company back for nothing, and you got a top-notch station manager in the bargain. Alan Michael, the Spalding history has always been never give away an asset outside the company. We are the custodians for the next generation, and somehow I seem to think you've forgotten that. Fine. Okay, there's a matter of what my position in the company will be. Well, what do you want? How about the television station for starters? Oh, I think I earned it helping bring Roger down. Don't insult my intelligence. Come on. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> Please, dear, I'm not going to give you WSPR to go and give Jilly as what, a, a New Year's present? Look, this is not how we are. This is not how we deal or treat people. I think you've got a lot more to learn than I thought. About what? Come on, about what? You get so emotionally involved. And I think it clouds your business sense. You slept with Jilly, didn't you? No. Oh, come on. You developed some emotional attachment oh, to please. it. please! Well, that's the only thing I can think of. Why? Because that's that what happened to you with Roger? Oh, come on, Aunt Alex. How I feel or don't feel about Jilly has nothing to do with what I owe her, what we owe her. You know, I wish you would trust my judgment on this. I think you owe me that respect. Darling, this is not about respect. You can't be this emotional about these things. This is business, and I do have the right to make all Spalding decisions. Besides, I thought you would have known I had other plans for WSPR. Oh, what, are you going to give it to Nick? I mean, not that he would really be interested in the first place, but are you sure you want to have him in partnership with Roger Thorpe? Or are you that sure that there isn't going to be a Roger Thorpe? Come in. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you, Miss Spalding, but the maid said that I would find Alan Michael here. Well, he's all yours, dear. How's your father? Great. He loves that car. <laughs> car? What car? Oh, your aunt gave my dad this great Excalibur. Well, a little gift for him helping us get Spalding back. Or do you think I should have given him the pharmaceutical division? Well, I uh, caught him in a really good mood, so he let me have it for a while. I was wondering if you wanted to go for a spin. No, it was here. I know it was here. Uh, are you looking for something, Miss Spalding? Well, it's one of those old snow globes, you know, that you, the kind that you turn it upside down. It snows on the scene. It's in our family for years. Well, when was the last time that you saw it? Uh, Lucy. Oh, you two go ahead, really. I know it was here when Jenna left. I, you have to talk to the maid. What exactly did it look like? Well, it was just one of those snow globes. You know, he turned it upside down. It's this lovely... Sea. But this one happened to be an antique. You know, I'm sure those two maids that Jenna left for us had something to do with it. Come on, wait, let's go. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's snowing out there. You know, they predicted a terrible storm. To... You two can wait it out here. I'll have Vera make you something. Maybe, oh, maybe some cocoa. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it's just snow, for heaven's sake. Come on, I'd like to go out there and enjoy it. I'm... It's gonna have to be back to the grindstone. You know, I probably won't get a day off until the 4th of July. Come on, let's go. Well, we'd better hurry. Okay, see you Bye. later, then, Alex. Bye. Have a good evening. Oh. Oh, <laughs> wow, what is this, some kind of a spalding retreat? Well, it belongs to my Uncle Ed. Bauer, it's the other side of my family. Oh. Yeah, I'd like to come up here. It's very relaxing. I like yeah. it. I can see it would be a nice change from that mansion. Oh, yes, it is. I'm just so afraid to mess up a towel. When I washed my hands, I ended up wiping them on my, my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I still want that grand tour, though. I want to see all those wineries and conservatories, the dungeons. Fine, I promise you a grand tour, and I will give it to you. I'll just make sure that my Aunt Alex isn't there when I, when I do it. 
Yeah, it's easier to steal in a peak spin, isn't it? What? Oh, like the globe, you know, the one that you shake up and it makes a snowstorm? Yeah, what about it? Oh, come on. Give me a little more credit than that, Al Michael. You know, it wasn't that tough to figure out what she was looking for. No, you don't have to deny it. Look, I know. I know that you needed a way in order to sleep that, that antique hairbrush underneath the Christmas tree, so you figured you'd take this to sort of sweeten me up, and that way I would help you. Look, that's not the way it went. Oh, right. You didn't think that she would miss it. Okay, okay, I took it. And I did it on impulse. But I, I did it because I wanted you to have something. You know, that meant something. So my aunt, she, she noticed that an air pocket where one of our family heirlooms had been. It's not like she cares about it. It's just inventory to her. I knew that you'd like it and appreciate it and gain pleasure from it. I mean, that's what I was thinking about when I took it. So you didn't really want my help? Yeah, I wanted your help. But I got a feeling you would have given me that anyway. Oh, you got me all figured out, don't look, you? Look, all I did was give Eleni back something that was in her family for a very long time and that she had to give up. I mean, why, why wouldn't you help me? Well, why didn't you just give it back to her yourself? Because you were the one that was helping her out. Well, I don't think that her husband would have uh, thought it was that simple. He might have read a little bit more into it than there actually was. Look, Lucy, I gave you something that I wanted you to have because I wanted to thank you. Because you've been... Well, you've been very good to me these past few months. I don't care what my Aunt Alex thinks. Look, I know how hard that you've worked to get that company back. Yeah, well, that work's just about ready to start. <clears throat> and Alex doesn't appreciate it very much, does she? It's no big deal. Yeah, it is. I mean, you did something that was truly really amazing, and well, she just acts like it would have happened all by itself. It's not very fair. No, it's not. Yeah, hi. Uh, the, the other guy I talked to said that all of your snow plows were out on call. Well, I'm, I'm up here at Laurel Ridge Road, uh, the Bower Cabin, and we're stuck up here. Well, medical emergency. Actually, um... Um... No. No, no, no emergency. Uh, but how, how soon can you get up here? Okay. Thank you. Well, you're uh, quite a capable girl. Oh, careful where I come from. That means not pretty. Well, I don't know how you would know that, seeing as I don't think there was ever anybody who had that thought about you in your entire life. Okay, so when's this uh, plow coming? Um, probably not till morning. It's okay, though. We've got plenty of wood, and uh, I know my Uncle Ed always keeps uh, cans of food in the cupboard, and we usually have sweaters and flannel shirts around here, so we've got plenty to keep us warm. Does that mean that we're staying here overnight? Uh, yeah. It looks that way. You know, I heard you talking to the guy on the service station, and you could have fibbed to get us out of here. Why did you really bring us here? See, um, when you walked into the study, my aunt's study, uh, I was so pissed off that I just wanted to, I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to drive away as far away and as fast as I could get. I mean, so my Uncle Ed's cabin seemed like the logical destination. See, the Bowers are also my family. I mean, not in the same way as the Spaldings. They don't make headlines and everything, but they, they're just as important to me. They're, they're... They're comfortable. They're what... They're what true family and friends, you know, feel like. 
They'll, they'll be there for you no matter what. I mean, no questions asked. So anytime I, I come up here, it, it gives me hope. It, it makes me feel like I, I don't have to be as ruthless as my aunt or my father. Wow. You know, now I understand why sometimes you can be really sweet and sometimes you still have that devious brain of yours. There really are two sides of you, aren't there? Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, it... It always gives me some kind of clarity when I come up here. It helps me to connect with that side. You know, when you first started talking, I was kind of disappointed because you didn't bring me up here to sleep with me. But now that you said something so real about yourself, well, I think maybe it's better. Well, it's, it's really good I, that we can talk. I'm really glad that we can do that. But it, it doesn't mean that I don't want to sleep with you. All right, what do we got here? Need uh, mittens, right? Yeah. You know, uh, hats? Hey. Things just look good on you. Cool, Thanks. great. What else? We scarves, 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 right. This is pretty good. What's wrong? Um, nothing. Here, here you go. Is that Elaine's? No. No, somebody else's. It's, um, it's my aunt's. Okay. All right, hot shot. Let's okay. see what you got now. Let's go. Hold on just a second here. You're all undone. Come on, you go out there, you're gonna get soaked. Let's get shaped on up here. Okay, wait a minute. Got that, all right, then. Yeah, it's right here. Okay, all right. You're all, uh, you're all zipped up. Uh, but I think I would fix that hat. I know in Tahoe's, the jet setters there, they wear their chapeaus this way, but, you know, we got wind here. We don't want it to blow off, okay? There. Is that better? <laughs> yeah, now you look like you're 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. Let's go. No, you're not. Oh, Michael. Yeah. Oh. oh, what was that? Oh, just a little present that I wanted oh, to give you. Oh, you're dead. You better run, bro. Run. No, 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 the winner. No. You made a deal. The winner gets first crack of the fire. Oh, but you didn't win. You cheated. Oh, please. All I did was apply aerodynamics to good sledding. I won Ferris. Don't even think about it. No, no, no. I do not have a sign on me that says kick me. <laughs> Sorry, I guess I'm not as sophisticated as you are. No, that's right. You're not as sophisticated as I am. I'm much more sophisticated. Oh, much more. Much. Much. <laughs> that's okay. I've got some things going for me. Yeah? I've got my charm. Yeah, you sure do. You really think I'm charming? Yeah, I do. Like... Like how? Oh, I don't know. I think a big part of your charm lies in uh, you being able to make transparent comments like that. I had fun. Yeah, I did too. It's a nice fire. really are pretty. You are, too. I don't want to be pretty. <laughs> what do you want to be? The best. The best at what? Everything. I have thought you already were. What do you want to be? Me? Yeah. 
I want to be Lucy in the sky with diamonds. <laughs> Pretzels. Here. I don't get it. Every time we get in a situation like this, you can make the smoothest transitions to food. <laughs> That's cervezas. Well, nothing like a couple of cold beers in front of the fire and uh, style pretzels. So, tell me what you're. Um... New Year's resolutions are. Gee, I don't know. Um, don't bet on Notre Dame in a big game. No, you're, you're real. Real? You want real? Okay. Um, real. There, there's this division in Spalding that, that I messed up once before. It, it's pharmaceuticals. I want another crack at it. I, I want to be able to put it back on top, you know? Bring Spaulding right along with it, where it should be. And I want my aunt to see that I can I can do it. I want her to be right there. I want her to prove to her that I'm just as much of a Spaulding as she is, or anybody else for that matter. I'm sure you are. You know, I'm capable. Capable enough to do it, too. I just need a shot. I just need that one shot. She's got to give it to me, you know? Don't you think? Yeah. And here I'm going on about something that you have absolutely no interest about whatsoever. Wait a minute. Why wouldn't I be interested? Come on, Lucy. It's business. No, it wasn't. You weren't talking about business. What was I talking about? You were talking about a man or a woman and getting goals. You know, and, and worth. And getting that chance to prove your worth. Everybody wants that, Al Michael. Yeah, I guess that is what I was talking about. Pretty smart girl, Lucy. You sure you don't want to sleep with me? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm not trying to play games. I, I don't know what it is. I just can't do it. I, I no, can't explain okay. it. Hey, hey, you don't have to explain. I'm sorry. No, and I don't want you to be sorry either. Look, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that you take making love so serious. I, I like, I appreciate girls that, that think it's very serious. Oh. Thank you. Mm. Resolution is. No, I didn't. Uh, sorry. What? What was it? I'm gonna marry you. Well, I still say you should wear this. Oh, you won't look cute. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Whoa! Hey, Dad. Wow! Check these two out. Huh? Well, I say that I look nice, but Lucy says she'd rather go to the party with Alan Michael Spaulding than with me. Oh, oh she's going to need to have a good time. You girls better get going. It was getting late. You're going to knock the socks off every single guy there. The socks, the socks I can live with. The socks are okay, but the rest of the clothes stay firmly attached to the body. Oh, the damn oven is broken again, Peggy. The lemon tarts are taking forever to cook. I have to call the towers and tell them we are going to be a half hour late. Hey. Oh, Lucy, look at this. Grown-up people dressed up. And this is wonderful. Do you know the last time I went out at night instead of sitting home babysitting? Wow. What's wrong with you? Oh, boy. He's 
crazy. Look at her. She doesn't hold a candle to you, Lucy. I've never seen a dress that stupid, except for maybe in Times Square. Yeah, well, she's probably not stupid enough to talk about other things. I mean, he probably likes her because she's smart enough not to talk about marriage unless she wants a guy to say, on your mark, get sick, get the hell out of here. Wait a minute. You talked to Alan Michael about marriage? Well, yeah, I kind of hinted that that was the direction. Oh, I boy. <laughs> Guess it was a little premature, huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, if somebody doesn't ask me to dance, I'm going to be in a really bed. Well, why wait to be asked? Yeah, you're right. Okay, what about him? Not bad. I think go for it. Okay. Hi. I'm going to be a few minutes to dance. Okay. Here we go, ladies. Still shoot the dice. Me? What happened to your date? What date? I may be crazy, but I could have sworn about ten minutes ago some girl was blowing in your ear. Simple? She's not my date. I knew her from a very long time ago. I don't know. She was glomming on to me tonight. I don't know why. Oh, maybe because you were glomming back. Oh, beautiful. There's so much glomming going on, I didn't think you noticed. Every man in the room noticed. Come on, are you going to dance with me? Or is midnight going to come and go and we're going to be stuck on opposite sides? Ten, nine, eight, seven. 1994 is right around the corner. Let's hope it's a better year, okay? My life. Mine too. At least Alan Michael likes you. Oh yeah? I wouldn't be so sure. You think he likes Jilly? I don't know. I mean, he said it was just business, but look at her. Yeah, she's pretty beautiful. But so are you, Lisa. You're gorgeous, really. You promised me half of WSPR. Now you're on to saying something like I can wait till hell freezes over. I think those are exact words. I haven't accepted that answer yet, and neither should you. I'm going to fight her on this, Jilly. We're family. We're going to have to come to some sort of a compromise. Well, that's certainly not the impression I got from her. Well, you don't know her as well as I do. There's going to come a time when Alexandra needs something from me, and when that time comes, she's going to have to deal with me. She's not going to have any choice on the matter. Alexander Spaulding without a choice. Now that I've got to see. Look, Jilly, it's gonna happen. You went to the mat for me with Roger, battling out with him, and my aunt was 10,000 miles away. I don't forget those conditions. Kind of okay? It's gonna be a good move. Waiting for him. He's still talking. What else am I supposed to do? Have you not learned anything by now? You cannot sit around waiting for a guy. You have to take matters into your own hands. Here. What are you doing? It's gonna keep us warm for a couple of hours. Come on. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Everything's going to be taken care of. And right now, I got somebody waiting for you. Ah, oh, Lucy. Yeah. Very sweet girl. So, tell me, is it serious? Yeah, how things going? Oh, but that's a silly question because everything is serious at her age, right? Oh. <laughs> Happy New Year. You too. Oh, it's only you, darling. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. 
It's all right. I was having a kind of a marvelous dream, actually. I dreamt that Roger's body was being devoured by a group of sharks. <laughs> Gee, I didn't realize that they ate their own. So, uh, where's, where's Fletcher? I thought that he would be here. No, he left a little while ago. Oh. I thought the two of you might... Uh... Well, you thought wrong. Mm -hmm. Get that look off your face. We had a lovely evening. And what are you doing here at this hour in the morning? Oh, I don't know. I just... I just thought I'd bury whatever hatchets we had between the two of us and ring in the new year, you and me. Well, I like that, too. Randy? Mm-hmm. This is another ploy to get me to buy that, that mythical share of WSPR going to Jilly, is it? And what makes you think that? Because you think you're right. Oh, no, I know I'm right. That's not why I'm here. Good. Because I think too much power in that woman's hands is dangerous. Well, I'm sure that's what the boys said about you, too. <sighs> well, why aren't we charming at 3 a.m.? I'm just getting my second wind. Mm -hmm. Jelly's charming, too, isn't she? Not to mention attractive, intelligent, and ambitious. Mm, yeah, she's all of the above, that's for sure. Mm. <laughs> mm, what? Are you sleeping with Jelly? <laughs> it looks so much bigger at night. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of things look bigger at night, young lady. <laughs> hey, are you going to hog all that? Give me some. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, if you two girls want to sit here all night, it, it's okay by me, but it'd be a lot well, cheaper to sit on the curb. <laughs> yeah, but then how are we supposed to tell if he comes out? Am I right? You're right. <laughs> you know, it took her a lot of guts not to sit around waiting for Alan Michael while he's flirting with some other woman. She's right. Faking out his house is much more mature. Exactly. <laughs> that way he'll never know that you know, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Alan Michael took me for granted last night, big time. So we're just going to sit around here and wait and see if his consolation prize shows up. Or if he really cares about me. <laughs> Joey, do you think I'm too young? No, we're the same age. <laughs> I mean, Frau Michael. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he is older than me, and he has a whole lot more experience, and he's been married a lot. And Jilly will... Oh, she... you can do anything Jilly Grant can do. Jilly, Jilly, Jilly. You know, I'm not 21 yet either, but if things had gone the way they were supposed to, I'd be married right now. Yeah. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to marry a guy who lives up on the hill? Oh, yeah. I think about it all the time. I'm not sleeping with Jilly Grant or anybody else for that matter. The only thing that I'm involved with at the moment is our company. Well, there's hardly any comfort in that in a cold winter's night. Yeah, well, you know me, Aunt Alex. I've always been very single-minded. You're all so handsome, rich, and eligible. And I find it really hard to believe that uh, you couldn't find some lovely young thing to take your mind off business, especially tonight. Oh, uh, well, there were, there were a few candidates at the, at the Towers Club, but one that I wanted, she... Well, don't tell me she didn't want you. <laughs> no, I don't think that was the case. I don't think that was the problem. Business got in the way, and I lost her. Careful, darling. You can lose a whole lifetime like that. What is this sudden concern with my social life? I just don't want you to think you have to impress me with some vow of celibacy. <laughs> Having traveled down that road myself, I find it has diminishing returns. So, why didn't Fletcher stay? Oh, you are persistent, aren't you? I told yeah. you. I told you we had a lovely evening, and then he went home. Why? I guess Fletcher doesn't believe he belongs here. Can't really say I blame him, you know. I mean, look at all this. This is our legacy. <laughs> Sometimes wonder if all the sacrifices the family has made, I, I wonder if it's all been worth it. Maybe it's like Vera's holiday food. 
just a little bit too rich for the blood. So why don't we make some new traditions then, Alex? Come on, it's a new year. <laughs> we interrupt it our is. regular It is indeed. It's a new year without Roger Thorpe. Special <laughs> news bulletin. <laughs> Widespread speculation that Roger Thorpe had been murdered is ended. Police report several witnesses claim to have spotted the prominent Springfield citizen, former CEO of Spalding Enterprises, in the area of 5th Street and on the riverfront in Springfield. If anyone has any information about Mr. Thorpe, the police ask that they call a special number set up for this purpose. It's going to be so beautiful, Lucy. It was on a hill. It was much bigger than that hill. And you can look out and see the lights of the whole city below. And he was going to put stained glass on one of the windows because he knew I liked it. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. And in the backyard, it was like being in the country. You know, there were willow trees drooping down and just acres and acres of wildflowers. And there was a little stream where... We would watch this cute little family of deer every morning and they would come and get something to drink. We'd sit there and watch them from the part of the house that was going to be the bedroom. Oh, man. He was building it all for me. Me too. Let's go up there so I can see it. I can't. Dylan burned it down. You're kidding me. Oh, I forgot you weren't in town when all this happened. You're probably the only person who hasn't witnessed me make a mess of my life. Come on, Jimmy. You couldn't have done anything that bad. <laughs> I knew I liked you, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You want to hear the gory details? Yes, tell me. Well, okay. It'd be nice to have somebody know the real story for a change. <laughs> Okay, I was in love with this guy named Hart Jessup. At least I thought it was love. I mean, it seemed that way. He was my first boyfriend, but, well, we kind of got into a big fight because he cheated on me with somebody else. So he ended up leaving town, and I was totally miserable, and I felt really bad until I started getting close to Dylan. He's cute. <laughs> He's hot. <laughs> I don't know, Dylan just... He just made me feel different, you know, grown up. I mean, he's so solid and strong. He's the kind of guy that you could, you could build a future with. You know, I felt like I was going to have everything I'd always dreamed about. But the problem was that everything was happening so fast. I, I had this little voice inside me that was telling me, you're too young, it's too soon. So why'd you agree to marry her? Well, because he was so sure about it, you know? And he swore that he would always be there for me to take care of me. He just wanted to get married so badly, and I, I thought that he knew better than me because he was older. So what'd you do? Well, everything was fine until Hart Jessup showed back in town and started hitting on me again. Well, I tried to stay away from him. I really did. I, I begged him to, to leave me alone, but he was so caught up in all these unresolved feelings he had for me, and he just wouldn't let it go. And then, to make matters worse, Dylan hired him to build our house. I don't know what he was trying to do. I don't know if he was trying to test me or what. I just felt like I was in the middle of this big macho tug of war, and I was the trophy. I didn't know what anyone wanted or what I was supposed to do. So what did you do? Well, I finally talked to Dylan about it, you know, and he was so great. He, he was really understanding. He said that he thought that everyone carried around feelings for the per first person they loved. It, it, was, it was natural, and it never totally went away. So I figured that it was normal that I still was attracted to heart. You know... Sometimes I think that he pushed me into what happened. Because all I know is that after I talked to him, I really felt like it would be better for all of us if I just got Hart out of my system once and for all. So you slept with Hart? How else was I going to let go of the fantasy? Yeah, but 
You didn't think that Dylan would mind? I didn't think he'd find out. Well, and you know, if he hadn't, I really, really think everything would be okay right now because it worked, Lucy. I got Hart out of my system. I was ready to marry Dylan. How did he find out? Somebody blabbed. Somebody vindictive and hateful who was jealous of me from the first moment she saw me. She spilled her guts right there at the altar in front of Dylan and the entire town. Yeah, who would do that? Bridget Reardon. Bridget's just one of those hateful people that has to try to ruin everybody else's happiness. Oh, some girls are just so desperate. Yeah, and some guys are so gullible. Yeah. They'll buy into anything, even when it comes to a loser like Bridget. Yeah. But they just want to feel sorry for her. They just want to take care of her. <laughs> well, maybe they want to get her into bed. Huh. There's no chance of that. <laughs> no, I'm talking about nice guys, like, like David Grimm, Dylan. You know, they all feel sorry for poor, sad little Bridget. But when it comes to me, it's, oh, Julie's so nice and normal and pretty. Like, that makes my life just peachy. Oh, guys just need to be needed, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I just feel like I'd let Bridget win. Why do you say that? Because I, I bought into that stupid guilt trip she laid on me. I was so shaken up. I just backed off. I, I gave up on him. Yeah. Which, which him? Both of them. <laughs> now Bridget's got Dylan dragging her butt all over town for the holidays. No. I don't get it. You know, I mean, some guys are just so smart about everything and yet so stupid about certain women. Yeah, I don't get it either. But I'll tell you one thing, Lucy. The next time I go after a guy, I am not letting anyone get in my way. I don't care what I have to do. So, if you really like Ellen Michael, go for it. <laughs> You're right. I'm gonna... You know what? I'm going to be doing him a favor, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though. I mean, Chili, she's just after him because she thinks that Al Michael's going to make her this big shot. And that snooty old aunt of his, she just treats him like he's just her personal ser servant. Mm. You know? Yeah. Hey, look. The lights are still on over there. Guess when you're that rich, you don't worry about the electric bill. <laughs> yeah. Or... What? Well, I hate to even say this, but... Maybe Alan Michael's consolation prize is already up there. Um... What, what happened? Oh, I just ripped my dress. Oh. No big deal. I'll get a dozen more by the time I marry Alan Michael. <laughs> Uh-oh. What? What's happening? It's just as I suspected, Lucy. It's with a woman. Oh, Julie, don't tell me that. It's a chilly, isn't it? It is. I know it is. Here, you gotta look for yourself. Come on. I don't... Come on. Oh. He's listening to the radio with his hand. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> There's no word at this time on Mr. Thorpe's physical condition, but he remains at large. Again, the police are asking anyone with information on his whereabouts to contact them immediately. This has been a special bulletin. We now return you to our ra- I knew this was too good to be true, but I don't know how to, how to feel happy that I'm not a murderess or sad because Roger isn't really dead. This yeah, you, you and the whole town. I just wonder what he's doing down on Fifth Street is all. Well, it could be anywhere by now, including the Spalding estate. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna double security for out here for tonight. I think it'd be a good idea, Alex, if you, uh, if you call the police now. Oh, oh. Okay, I, wait, just a higher. I think I can almost see him through it. Stop moving so much. Okay, okay, just don't drop me again. Oh. <laughs> All right, ladies, freeze right where you are. I don't think I can. Oh. <laughs> 
What do you think you're doing? Uh, nothing, officer. Um, we were just looking to see, if, you know, if anybody lives here. Well, you're under arrest. No, she, she's a close personal friend of this family. She is. Well, then let's go inside and you can explain. No, no, I, I've never, ever seen these people at all in my entire life. Huh? Do you have a gun in the house? That's an absurd question to ask me. Well, we're being useful right now. We've caught the prowlers. Just a couple of teenagers. Thank you. If there's anything else you want us to do, we... No, thank you. Uh, one of our security guards will be along in a moment. One security guard? And Alex, do you think that's going to be enough if Roger decides to come pay us a visit? going on out here. That's a pretty row, Mrs. Spalding. I wanted to say congratulations on your company. I, I heard the good news. And who the hell are you? I'm Ju um, I'm Bridget Reardon. I, I was here last year with I my brother. I have never seen this girl before in my life. And may I ask what you people are doing out here? How long does it take to, to, to arrest a simple trespasser? Never mind. It's coming. just found out that Roger Thorpe is not only alive, but apparently still kicking. But obviously you've already well, we found out. We were it on the radio, and then there was a knock on the door out there. At... Sorry. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing I was the one that was out there instead of Roger, isn't it? Otherwise, you'd have finished him off for good, and then you really would have been in some trouble, right? What? Hmm. Brother, the cop, he would kill me. We're not going to get arrested, okay? Well, why do you think we won't? We were trespassing. It's not a big deal, okay? Yeah, we were trespassing on Alexandra Spaulding's estate, who happens to be one of the meanest old maids in the county, not the whole country. Did you call that lawyer like I told you to? Not exactly. What is not exactly? Is not exactly yes or no? Well, uh, look, if you must know, I called time and weather. Did you make your call? Oh, Frank! Julie, what's Frank, on? thank you so much for coming. I'm so sorry to get you down here at this hour, but it was just a big misunderstanding, really. Detective Levy is supposed to be a good friend of Tony's. He's think he's gonna arrest us. For, well, for what? These little ladies were found uh, clowning around the Spalding estate, and they had the misfortune of scaring Alexandra Spalding half out of her mind. Is that right? Any property damage? Nope, that's it. Miss Spalding filed a complaint? Not yet, but I gotta warn you, Frank. Alexandra Spalding was very upset and she wanted to make sure that these ladies were arrested. Well, you know what? Uh, I got a better idea. I'll only call Al Michael Spalding. Maybe he can calm his aunt down. Okay, I'll call him in a couple hours. Well, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't have to wait. I mean, um, Al Michael's an early morning riser, right? I mean, why don't we call him right now? I'm sure he won't mind. For the last time, Detective Levy, my aunt does want to press charges against the trespassers. Look, she told the arresting officer, she told you, and now I'm telling you. What extenuating circumstances? No, no, I don't want to come down there in the middle of the Al night to sign a complaint. Wait, hold, hold on hold just it. a moment. What? Darling, I think you should go down there. Is that about these Yes, young yes, girls? it is. Well, then I think you should go down no, there. No, no, they broke the law. They were out playing around on the middle of our lawn. No. Uh, Michael, tell him you'll go down there, please. The, the, Why? We're not hearing everything on the radio. The police know more. If you go down there, you'll be able to find out what's going on. Please, darling. Detective Levy? Yeah, okay. I'll be down there in a few minutes. Can you do me a favor? You keep an eye on her while I'm gone? Sure, of course I will. You just make sure you let us know if you find anything about Roger. Yeah, yeah. Thank I'll be you. right back. All right.
Now look, Frank, I got no problem dropping the trespassing charges. Well, listen, thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, as long as Alan Michael Spaulding agrees. <clears throat> oh, uh, he'll agree all right once he sees who it is. <laughs> but I got another problem, Frank. Yeah? What's that? Miner's drinking. I got a big problem with that. Lucy and Julie were drinking? Their arresting officers found a dead champagne bottle in the back of the cab that they took to the Spaulding place. And we both know that they're underage. Yeah, I remember when I was their age, uh, I was no angel in that department either. Then I sobered up when a buddy of mine ended up in a wheelchair because he was driving while drunk. At least they had the common sense to call a cab. Well, it wouldn't hurt to teach him a little lesson now, would it? Well, Frank, I mean, I, I know that you know Miss Balding pretty well. Maybe you could talk to her and get her to drop the charges. Yeah, maybe, but uh, I think you're in a little bit more trouble than just trespassing. Why? All we did was climb over this stupid wall. Yeah. No, you did more than that. What? What? Well, Detective Levy is planning on charging you both with public drunkenness. Oh, oh no. My dad is going to kill me. Here. Blow into these. So these are the two trespassers that my Aunt Alex reported. You know, by all rights, your aunt should be the one to sign the complaint, but Mr. Cooper here thought it would go easier on the girls if you came down instead. Mm -hmm. Hi, Alan Michael. You know, things just got a little out of hand, that's all. Look, I don't think they meant any harm. I just uh, get the impression that they just kind of... Uh, Wandered their way onto your property. I don't think they were going to commit any kind of crime or anything. No, no, of course not. See, my only question, though, is why didn't they just ring the bell? Well, maybe we thought you were busy. I mean, one minute you offer Lucy a tour of your mansion, the next minute you're off chatting it up with some other woman. Is that what happened, Elmore? I. I got waylaid by business briefly, and I think Lucy. <clears throat> Lucy misunderstood. I'm sorry, Lucy. Yeah, I'm sorry. You don't have anything to apologize for. Now, between the two of you, I got a headache that won't quit. Well, I can't do anything about that, Detective, but uh, I can sign whatever papers you need for me to sign to drop the trespassing charge. In line 12, it says I, I wish to withdraw. But this doesn't clean the slate for you ladies. If you ever try to buy a drink in this town again before you're 21, I don't care if you're never around a moving vehicle, I'm going to have your licenses revoked, plus a night in jail for good measure. Frank? Listen, I'm really sorry about all this, you know, dragging you down here at this hour. I feel really bad. Look, I'm sure you've been up with Marina at this hour, too, so, um, let me just call it even, all right? Just, just don't make a habit of it. Okay. You know, Lucy and I were so intent on getting our night out. It, we just got a little carried away, that's all. You guys are getting to be buddies, huh? Uh-huh. It's nice. She hasn't met very many people since she's been in town, and uh, certainly wouldn't want Alan Michael to be her only friend. Hey, hey, come on. If, if I would have known it was you, I would have come down here and, you know, dropped the charges. Look, Alan Michael, can we just forget about this, please? Fine, just answer me one question. Why were you spying on me? I mean, what did you expect to find? So she come home? Yeah, I gotta go. Hey, whoa, well, you're not going anywhere. Wait a second, why not? Yeah, all the charges were dropped. Yeah, she passed your breathalyzer test with flying colors. Well, I guess there was one charge we got to tell you about. Resisting arrest. Look, the judge fined her $200 for resisting arrest. It's all paid up, so can she please go now? I need an aspirin. Yes, yeah, sure. Vaya con Dios. Look, Alan Michael, I'm going to pay you back your $200. Oh, Lucy, it's $200, okay? Come on, it's not a big deal. Yeah, well, it is a big deal to me. And I'm going to pay you back as soon as I get full Lucy, I don't want an IOU. Phone. I just want you to answer my question. What question? Were you expecting to find Jilly when you looked through that window? Look, every time she shows up, your head does a 180-degree turn. It's worse than that rat face girl in The Exorcist. I think... You're exaggerating here, okay? I think you're imagining things. Okay, fine. I'm imagining. Look, look, hey, I was really ticked off when you left the Towers Club there. You know, I, I was all ready to give you a nice tour of the mansion. Yes, sir. Yes, I was. I was. 
There I was with an opportunity to show somebody who would really appreciate something I had taken for granted my entire life. So may I re-extend the invitation? You really want me to come back after everything that happened here tonight? Yes, I'd like for you to come to dinner tomorrow night. Okay? Um, well, I'm not sure if I can make it. I'll have to get back to you. Slow down. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't, Dad. I'm kind of in a rush. Hey, stop! Frank tells me that he had to fish you out of jail. Uh, yeah, it was um, just some silly misunderstanding. No, the story is, is you were sneaking around Spalding property, peeking through windows, spying on Alan What's-His-Name. Look, it was just a lark, okay? A bad one. And Alan Michael's not mad at me, so please don't be, all right? Look, I don't like the idea of my daughter being in jail. I especially don't like the idea of you making a fool out of yourself over Alan What's-His-Name. Look, Alan What's-His-Name does not think that I'm a fool. In fact, Alan Michael Spaulding invited me over to dinner tonight at the mansion with his aunt and everybody. So, doesn't that tell you something? Yeah. I don't want you to get hurt. That's right, Vera. Miss Lucy Cooper will be joining us for dinner tomorrow night. Can you make something special? Of course. You like that young lady, don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alan Michael, am I too early? No, no, no problem. Uh, Vera, listen. If anybody calls for me, could you take a message, tell them I'll get back to them, and uh, set another place for dinner for Miss Grant tonight. She'll be joining us. Uh, we have some business to discuss with my aunt tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Paul, oh, uh, hi. I'm very excited over the phone. I am. I'm going to get your aunt to change her mind about WSPR. Oh. Well, Jilly, I hope you can, but uh, I got to level with you. I've never seen my aunt so rigid about anything in my entire life. I mean, I think it's going to be very hard for her to change her mind this fast. Oh, but you see, I don't want a handout. I've got a new plan. I really want the Spalding half of WSPR, so I am going to try and buy it from her. Actually, I think that's a, that's a really good idea. You know, I don't think she wants to have half ownership of anything with Roger at this point. Well, Roger's hardly a problem anymore now that he's dead. Um, Billy, haven't you been reading the papers lately? Roger is as alive as you or me. All I'm saying is, people like the Spaldings, that they're rich, they're famous, they're glamorous, but they also operate by their own rules. They put themselves on pedestals. They don't need your help. <laughs> Thanks, but I'm not putting anybody up on any pedestal. Besides, if I am, I'm putting myself right up there with them. <laughs> Come on, I'm as good as they are. Isn't that what you always taught me? Yes, but... But? But? That other night when I went to that that fancy party up at the country club. I was listening to all the people talk. They're not any smarter than I am. It's just wear fancier shoes. <laughs> what am I gonna do with you? <laughs> One minute. One minute. One minute. You're as, you're as old as the hills. The next minute, you're as green as they come. I guess it worries me. I mean, you're... I honestly believe that you're smart enough to handle Alexander, but how are you going to handle somebody like Alan Michael? <laughs> I mean, you've gotten yourself in trouble before in types like that. Oh, no, not this again, please. Is that what this is all about? Yeah, I don't want to see you get hurt. Isn't that for me to decide? You keep trying to run my life. Or is it maybe because you're afraid you made a mess of your own? When we were traveling around together, I used to try to convince myself that the past didn't exist and the future was slimless. But you know what? I see things differently now. Is this going to be a long speech because, like, I really got to do my nails before dinner tonight? Shut up and listen. You're going to get some parental wisdom. Oh, maybe tomorrow, okay? But actions, actions have consequences. When you fall in love, there are consequences. When it doesn't work out, there are even more consequences. I mean, the relationships are just incredibly weird and complicated. I hope this time you look before you leave. You're feeling guilty about Nadine, aren't you? No, I don't know. I don't think guilty is the wrong word. Look, I just think she's great, and I don't understand how you can choose that snooty old Brit over her. She's not snooty. I mean, Jenna hasn't had anybody she can trust. She just has a little edge. 
So she's gonna trust you? <laughs> Look, I'm trying to do good by so many people, but I'm probably doing bad for everyone. Don't you think I know that? Okay, okay, but I still vote for Nadine. You're not running the election, darling. Yeah, and neither are you when it comes to Alan Michael. You know, you're too fresh for your own good. Yeah, I know. You told me that once or twice before. Come on, Dad. I just don't get it. I don't understand how come you don't like Nadine. I love her. Can you understand that? Frank doesn't seem to understand that. He thinks it's impossible to love more than one person at the same time. You can understand that, can't you? Yeah, actually, I can. It's sort of like they're there and there's something there and you don't know exactly what it is and everybody else thinks you're just setting yourself up for a failure but you still gotta go after it otherwise you're just gonna kick yourself for not going for it something like that yeah i know it's the same with me now michael so don't fuss with me anymore just wish me luck I'm willing to put everything I have into this station. Blood, sweat, my bank account. But I still need your help, Alan Michael. Well, if you pitch this to my Aunt Alex, Jilly, I will stand behind you 100%. That's great, but I need more than your moral support. I also need your financial help. Now, as you said, this is a good proposal, but it's not enough. Look, I, I swear to you, I will make your investment pay back and then some. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Jelly, come on. I owe you. I'm not going to break my promise, like I said. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Um, look, maybe uh, you should give some thought to being more than a uh, silent partner. Oh, no, 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 no. I just got back at Spalding Enterprises. I, that's all I want. That's what I fought for. Jelly, I learned from my experience at the journal. I don't like small pawns. Yes. But WSPR is a small pawn now, but it won't be for long. Not if I have anything to do with it. And besides, I mean, why can't you do both? Look, I will be there on a day-to-day -day basis making most of the decisions, but I could really use somebody like you to bounce ideas off of every now and then. Alan Michael, you are one of the smartest men I know. Yes, oh. you're, no, yes but you're totally unconventional. I mean, you've got your feet on the ground, yet you're willing to take risks. I know that if we work together, we can take WSBR to national attention. Ha <laughs> Bravo, Jilly. I couldn't have done that better myself. Excuse me, but Alan Michael invited me over for dinner tonight. Why would I make up something like that? Or do I need some engraved invitation to gain I am sorry, house? miss, but you must be mistaken. Mrs. Sporting left strict instructions to hold all calls and visitors. You got a lot of moxie, Miss Grant. Remind me of myself in the old days. Alan Michael, you'd do well to keep this lady right close by. I mean, she's smart as a well, whip. Alan Michael, I don't know that he's in a minute and you simply rush him. Uh, uh, could you, um, please call up your guard dogs and let them know that I'm your date for dinner tonight? Tonight? Dinner? Yeah. Remember, you... No, no, that that was for tomorrow night. Oh, um, it it is tomorrow night. Yeah, no, but I meant tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Oh, boy, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I can see how we got confused. Vera, please set another place for dinner. Well, we certainly have a full gathering tonight. Yes, and it's all my fault. I'm sorry. You look great. Yeah. yeah. I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to finally meet you. Thank you. Feelings mutual. Oh, Vera, I'd like you to hold up dinner for a bit. We'll have the champagne in here, too. Um, and Alex, actually, uh, Jillian and I have something to discuss with you before dinner. Yes, I think you'll be very interested in it. Yes, fine, fine. But first, I have an announcement to make. Sorry I'm here tonight. No, don't be silly. I'm, I'm very glad that you're here. 
Uh, I'll give you the grand tour in a minute, but right now I have some very important business, so uh, keep your fingers crossed. Alexandra, I realize it's a bit unconventional. Discuss business here in your home rather than at the office. But I... Oh, thank you. I do have something that I think will be very interesting to you. Yeah, and Alex, I think you're really going to love this. Well, bye. In a minute. Now, first, I would like to officially welcome Nick and Mindy to the family home. We're all so thankful that you're alive and well. And, in the wake of this recent loss, this disaster, I think it's a perfect time for giving an early wedding present. Something to look forward to. And uh, something I hope will be representative of many good things to come. So, this is from Nick's family and it's for Nick's family. So I present to my brilliant and beloved son, the Spalding half of WSPR. 